Hey YouTube, today I'll be reviewing Back to the Future's Ultimate Marty McFly by NECA from 2020, and also the Back to the Future Time Machine by Jada from 2021. I got the Marty McFly at my local Books A Million bookstore for its full retail price of $27.99. I'm only expecting this figure to go up in price, and they seem to be running out of circulation. And I got the Time Machine from my local Walgreens store for $6.99. Time to open it up. This figure is six and a half inches tall. Articulation wise, boy, some of these new modern toys, I want to start taking WD-40 to them because their joints are super tight at first, but once you start working them around, it's, it's a little better. But anyway, you get a leg upwards, outwards, bend the knee, that's as far as it goes. There's a, a little bit of give on feet and ankles, uh, but not much, just ever so slightly. For some reason they did uh, put a chest joint in there, but it's irrelevant because his clothing is not removable. Uh, arms outwards, upwards, and he has, he's double jointed in his elbows, swivel the wrist, and just slight hand movement, head left and right downwards not much upwards his appearance is phenomenal NECA almost always does a great job on action figures in detail from his feet his shoes look worn even dirty but notice how NECA wasn't allowed to do a full Nike logo but who else would notice that besides me his jeans jacket and shirts all have realistic stitching and buttons and plenty of added paint detail hey kid What'd you do, jump ship? What? Well, what's with the life preserver? His life preserver probably has more detail than in real life, but in some areas in the back it does look like it could have used a second coat of paint. I was amazed at the level of detail and inclusion. Even having his suspenders under his jackets, cuffs rolled up, 80s watch, and tendons, veins, and nails on, on his hands. Great level of detail, NECA. His head sculpt is also pretty good. Even the best of customs couldn't look better than this. His face looks just like his movie counterpart. Age appropriate, and I'm only noting what looks like purple eyeshadow, like he hasn't slept. But if I traveled to 1955 suddenly, I probably wouldn't sleep for a couple days either. Accessories. You will get his skateboard which looks just like it does in the movie. And they did a great job. There's a level of detail to it and texture and the paint, the logos, just excellent. The wheels even turn. You will also get his guitar, the first guitar you see him with in the movie. And again, the, the level of detail is just insane. Uh, you can see just level on, on the bridge, the humbucker, the tuning pegs, machine heads. Uh, the tuning pegs are even individually turned. They're not just boring and just all in one direction. Uh, and even on the back you can see where the string through area, back compartment, the input jack. <laughs> no other toy company would go to that level of detail. It's just absolutely insane. And luckily the guitar strap is very plenty flexible. It's not stiff, you don't have to worry about it breaking in, into. Now, 10, 20 years from now, this thing might stiffen up and become kind of frail and fragile. But as of right now, you're, you're safe, you're good. You also get another head sculpt, like you see when he's playing that yellow guitar. The sunglasses are not removable, do not attempt to try, they are glued in. You will get another set of hands and also his guitar pick hand which is also accurate uh, in the movie he was holding a silver pick so it's exactly what you get the book bag it uh it has a lot of detail it's it's nicely done but it's only meant to be carried uh on one shoulder it's uh 
you know, the uh, straps don't divide into two to be fully fully worn, you know, you can only... And it's even molded to be just kind of hanging off his uh, side of his body there. Uh, now, you also get his camera, too, and uh, I'm giving you some advice here. When you're taking out these accessories, and I, I should have known better, uh, when you're taking out accessories, you want to push from, from the back instead of pulling out straight because that's I thought you know I didn't have anything to worry about so I'm I'm picking and pulling and unfortunately I broke the boom microphone on the camera so I gotta get the super glue out now um, it goes right there like that <laughs> so a little fragile piece right there um, I gotta be careful not to lose that but I am, again, I'm just so amazed at the level of detail on all these accessories and the figure. I mean, even this little tiny camera has everything that this model would have had. It's got the freaking battery pack um, and some wires and, um, and it's not my lighting or the camera, but if you look at the lens, it's actually shining like a real lens, almost like if it were glass. Same thing for even in the viewfinder. It looks like it's glass. How, how do they even do that? I'm just totally blown away here. Um, best accessories I've seen in an action figure, or for an action figure in quite some time. Very, very good. Now when it comes to actually changing hands, uh, if you haven't seen my Dragon Ball Z videos, be very, very, very careful, okay? Don't try to pull. Um, I was trying to pull this hand out, and I'm just so scared. I feel like I'm going to break break it. So I'm going to try to bravely do this on camera here, and, and you can see how stubborn it can be. So I'm trying to twist and turn and pull. And please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. Come on. Ah. Ah, luckily, got it. <laughs> Okay, the head sculpt on the other hand is no problem at all. It it pops off pretty pretty easy. Um, very easy to exchange that. So this is the DeLorean time machine. Uh, not too much a whole lot to say about it. Looking through the box, I didn't expect so much detail. But now that I have it out of the box, uh, I'm actually fairly impressed. There's a little more than I thought. Uh, for example, on, on the back, you can see uh, tons of wires and all the doodads that it had in its movie count counterpart, including the uh, plutonium uh, reservoir there. Uh, opening the doors and trying to get a good look and see there. Um, uh, hard to see on video here, but I try to get some pictures. If you look way in the back, there is a flux capacitor. And that's really all that matters. There's no room though for to turn the time circuits on. There's supposed to be a little knob in there. Um, on the dash there is uh, that board to enter the dates, but of course you know they not offer them to actually put numbers or stickers on there because it's only it's only so large. Um, of course there are uh, a lot of different versions of these, much bigger ones where they can include such things. Um, but this is certainly better than the Hot Wheels one, in my opinion. You can fit a few more things on there that the Hot Wheels version could not. Um, I do like um, the finish on it. It does look like stainless steel. It is a little, little extra shiny than I'd care for. Uh, but it's still... Uh, looks pretty accurate uh, and I think it's pretty good for $6.99 I'm I think that's pretty good I have been waiting decades for affordable movie accurate back to the future figures to finally come out that time has finally come to pass I could not be happier with my purchases the Marty McFly figure alone would have made me happy, but throwing in accessories, extra hands, and a head sculpt is just going above and beyond. 
There are still only a few action figures in this line, and I would like to see the rest of the casket figures, or even multiple figures, portrayed throughout this trilogy. We are still missing a George McFly, Jennifer, multiple Biffs, Lorraine, but as of now, I'm just happy NECA and Jada made these. And that wraps up my review. Stay tuned for more pictures and videos, and I will see you in the future, or the past. Take care. November 5th, 1955. Yes, of course, November 5th, 1955. <laughs>